When humans began living in large groups, had words and created sentences, they also acquired an entirely new consciousness. For the most part, our consciousness consists of a long stream of thoughts in the form of words. We experience ourselves as unique individuals. And suddenly, there is the possibility of sharing this consciousness with other people. The world is a mosaic of visions, and each vision is encapsulated by a language. Every child has an inherent urge to learn a language. Every child masters the incredibly complex task it is to learn his or her mother tongue. Some people think there are as many as 10,000 languages in the world, and some people think it's as few as four or 5,000. At the end of the day, most people think the figure is round about 6,000 languages. So, 6,000 languages, and the serious situation is that half of those languages are so seriously endangered that they're likely to disappear within the next 100 years. Every time a language is lost, one vision of the world disappears. We use language to describe our world. Through language we create reality. I can express anything I wish in my mother tongue, and you can do the same in your mother tongue. We grow up in different environments, and this means that certain words and concepts are unique in each language. Now, whatever language you now speak, whether it is English or French or German or Danish or Russian or Chinese, what would you have lost if you had never had? To lose my mother tongue would be like being forced into a linguistic exile. With the language, much of what came before me would disappear. I would lose my family's history and culture. My life and my language are bound together like twins or a married couple. We can be divorced or follow separate paths and live happily, but we will always experience a sense of loss. Now there are only 6,000 visions out there, and 3,000 of these visions are likely to disappear in the current 100 years. So we are at a real risk of losing the, 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 the perception of what it is to be human, which is in our, in our understanding of what it is to be human. Australia has lost 95% of its linguistic heritage. This is the worst case probably of any continent and country around the world. They come back? Yeah. Even the United States where the languages have been under threat, there's still many more Native American languages that are spoken. I have worked on, uh, on Australian Aboriginal languages for about 30 years and I, s I had studied uh, 12 different languages, going out to remote locations and studying the languages with the people. Um, every single language of those 12 today has nobody left who speaks it as their language. The result of the colonization of Australia was a dramatic reduction in the Aboriginal population. Men, women and children died of new diseases which their immune system could not cope with. Many were killed in punitive expeditions, random killings and even organized genocide. <laughs> Rolling a 
what happened was once we had Empire just set up and we were producing our own programs, we could actually put them to air on our own in our own time slot. So, you know, we could put them air right on prime time whenever we wanted. And we had control over those films and we owned the copyright and we were making the decisions about them. Not everyone out there, English is their first language. English in a lot of these communities is like their eighth or ninth language. So we need to make sure that we're catering for their needs. <laughs> Early in the 20th century, the Australian government had a policy of removing um, mixed blood children from their parents, taking them away. The idea being that they would be educated in the white man's world and they would do better and so on. It was a, a terrible social policy that split families apart and completely disrupted communities because they were taken away and forced to live in dormitories and become domestic servants for the white people. And so they lost the chance of having their languages and cultures. But the white men didn't really want us. They wanted us out of the way. We were an embarrassment to them. We were a race of people that was created from the white men raping and, and uh, using, sexually uh, using our uh, Aboriginal women. So we were that race of children that was um, brought into the world that nobody really wanted. <laughs> And then she turned around to me and said, you know, why aren't you speaking language to me? Are you ashamed, girl, to talk language to me? And I say, no, Mum, I'm not ashamed. I don't know how, you know, because we just got the language beaten out of us. The purpose of this suppression was not only to do away with the Aboriginal people, but also to obliterate their language and identity. <laughs> So languages encode, encapsulate the culture of the people. And every language then is a world unto itself, as it were. It's a way of seeing the world and talking about the world, a way of uh, carrying the culture of the group who speak that language. The music, the poetry, the songs, the stories. Krunk, krunk. Honum fannst gott að sveima í frelsi háloftana. Þanga bars lítill háfaði. Já, ekki kynum gómalega jæla, að bæði ótur hann alveg mónið jæla. Æ, að dama kunna ég kóra hún. Ekki kynum mér sem að bæði kunna ég. Og að mér bæði pili mæðinu nám mónið jæla. Gandi mannu gandi nú búla ma bar bagan gandi 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 Anything we can say verbally, we can also say in sign language. But it is a misunderstanding to think that everybody speaking sign language will understand one another. There are many different sign languages. Swedish sign language, American sign language, English, Chinese, French, Danish, Korean, Finnish, Russian.
Each sign language has its own rules for sign formation and sentence structure. We share the same conceptual universe, whether we can hear or not. But sign language is different from the spoken language in any given society. It has its own grammatical rules based on its form in a three-dimensional space in which it is expressed. There are so many sign languages in the world that deaf people attending international conferences would also be lost without simultaneous translators. Language spreads not because of any intrinsic character of the individual language. There is no such thing as a, as a simple language which everybody is attracted to use. All languages are complicated to more or less the same extent in a number of different ways. Or from Kofiana, Mifrigana, Namiafansini, I am Dodd Demetio. My home country is Ghana on the West African coast. And I was born in Kumasi, almost at the center. The surrounding villages depend on their own land for food, a native clay pot. With no traffic lights or militia beacons to bother it, our sense of smell unerringly takes us to the native market. Sun-dried fish, goat's meat, chickens, shellfish, heat and humanity, blending to produce an indescribable odor, so we won't attempt to do so. We were a British colony. And so English was a pretty common one heard it. Uh, BBC was always, I recall, even as a child, my parents wake, waking up to the six o'clock news. You know, and so you hear the BBC, you hear English around you. And in the uh, professional area, people spoke English. On the parade ground, native troops line up and our naval detachment presents arms. Well, language spreads because of the power of the people who speak it. And of course, in the case of the Indo-European family, what we're seeing over many hundreds of years is different empires being built by different civilizations. So classically, the British Empire taking English, the Spanish Empire taking Spanish, the Portuguese Empire taking Portuguese. And it is this, of course, which has had such a serious effect on the minority languages of the communities in which they ended up in contact. Those who can speak a little English are enormously proud and make it their business to ask numerous questions. No, no, this way, see? Fante is one of the languages in Ghana, but you do have uh, Eve, Ga, and Dagomba, which is quite different. When I went to school, I started learning in the local language, and then English was introduced later, and then later on French was introduced as well. I was a teenager when we got uh, independence and um, was very keen on developments and I was following the policy because my father and others were very actively involved and they were constantly discussing it at home and there was such electricity in the air. The people of Ghana see their freedom as more than a local triumph for they are now the only all African dominion in the British Commonwealth. A position of great responsibility. For a young man growing up, used to British uh, civil servants, British Governor General, in authority, and suddenly you see this change where the first person in the land is not the Governor General, but the Ghanaian Prime Minister. Outside Parliament House, crowds acclaim the hero of the hour, Dr. Nkrumah, the Prime Minister. And since everyone's dancing, why shouldn't he? The ministers were Ghanaians and they were the ones running affairs and trying to shape the future of the country. So you, apart from the political excitement of being part of this monumental change, you also walk away with the feeling that change is indeed possible. There is one universal truth, and that is any larger language is likely to dominate a smaller language. Any larger culture is going to dominate a smaller culture. That seems to be a human fact of life. So it doesn't really matter whether we're talking about Spanish or French or German or Portuguese or Arabic or Hindi or Russian or Chinese. These are all major, major languages which, as they go in their different parts of the world, act as steamrollers, crushing the smaller languages in their path.
请你贵方子，请说普通话 ，please say Mandarin. It is the objective of the Chinese government that all citizens become fluent in standard Mandarin. Shang Sha Ho is spoken by five million. It is a dialect of Shang. Shang is spoken by thirty-six million. Many Chinese people see Shang as a dialect of Mandarin. It can often be difficult to distinguish between a dialect and a language. A very good example is Scandinavia, where the people who speak Swedish, Norwegian. In Danish, to a greater or lesser extent, I find that they're understanding a great deal of what everybody says. But nobody would dare to say that a Norwegian would speak Swedish or Danish. Or the other way round. For political reasons, over recent hundreds of years, these people from these three different countries think of themselves as speaking three different languages. 以前以前我们三个小孩住的房间条件呢是相当差，楼上连下水道都没有，吃的方面呢三个小孩子吃完都吃不饱，可以说是不是生活而是生存的问题，是改天生存的问题。是来自长沙市，我就出生在长沙市这个地方，嗯，所以我的这个母语就是长沙话。Oh no, I speak in Madrid. I should speak local language. 进学校前可能看电视啊、听收音机啊，都是普通话，都会有一些印象和模仿。因为到学校课就学这种非常正规的普通话。但是我更喜欢、更习惯于讲普通话一点，因为跟我的根属是很有关系的。欢迎各位在今天收看《政法报道》，我是丑倩。普通话是应该最为广泛的，包括在呃媒体、在电视，还有在官方语言里面，甚至在扩大，还有现在我们都要求所有的公务员，就是这种政府部门人员都要讲普通话。Mandarin is the world's most widely spoken mother tongue. It is a growing language, also internationally. 如果我有一个小孩，那我肯定会让他学普通话。嗯，因为这是一个。在中国沟通的非常普遍的一种语言，但是，呃，如果我的小孩跟我的父母在一起的时候，呃，跟我家人在一起的时候，呃，如果他能够学到一些长沙话，我我不反对，嗯、呃，但是我不会刻意的去教他讲长沙话，嗯。现在的情况就发生很大的变化，吃的方面是根本不是问题，不是营养不足，而是营养过剩。因为中国讲的是，这个世界最大的市场，所以在中国会有很多的这一种生意往来，呃，有很多的机会，嗯，所以现在国外都是很多很多人，越来越多的人开始学汉语，所以我肯定，你这个就就是讲，你我我自己的优势肯定会高出许多子来学习汉语，嗯哼。现在是一黄金周呢，已经是圆满的画上了一个句号。那么这个旅游黄金周也是带动家人经济的活跃。Language is so close to the heart. Language is part of your soul. Language is um is is something that you you feel very sensitive about. <laughs> 
we will learn if somebody comes with violence you have to again tackle him with violence Africa. Africa. For generations, the poor people have learned to keep their mouths shut. Frustrated parents and siblings have literally beaten their children to silence. Polsmoor Prison, Cape Town, South Africa. Many young people join the infamous Cape Town gangs who have violence as their preferred language. There are no opportunities. There is no hope. When they no longer have any means of expression, both people and communities are torn apart. No, I don't have my own bed. I also share a bed with some other people. We are three in two beds, so we don't have enough space to sleep. In ghettos, rife with unemployment and poverty, words are often rejected violently. The spoken word has all but lost its meaning. I got one life in 26 years. I get it from high court. That life in 26 years. This is my three sons. I want to see them, but I've seen uh, only the first of July. That is the first time in one year I've been seeing my three sons. When, if at all, a prisoner receives a visit, only a few family members at a time are allowed. A thick glass wall divides the prisoner from his family. But a new organization set up by guards and prisoners together has arranged a family day. About 100 prisoners are allowed to meet with their families. For things to change inside the prison, for inmates themselves, and ultimately for society as a whole, violence must give way to dialogue. We have to be crime free. And the only way to do that is to start here in prison. Because we have to pass that legacy. We have to prepare ourselves for tomorrow. Times. Engaging ourselves in this organization, it has given us a, 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 a platform to change that legacy. And this is what this organization is doing. Prepare us and, and engage us to take responsibility for our actions so that when we go outside, we can be totally changed people. But you can never ch start change where it's supposed to be implemented. You have to start change now. If vicious circles are to be broken, conditions change, societies change, language must be recaptured. Languages have a fundamental role in helping us define our identity, who we are. This is another loss that we see taking place uh, with the loss of languages, is the loss of identity, loss of people's clear ideas of who they are, where they come from, what their history is, how they relate to other people. Um, and in the worst cases, this can lead to, to terrible loss of self-esteem and self-evaluation. It means that people don't feel they have a place in the world anymore, that they're just being trampled by outsiders and bigger languages. <laughs> Está bien lo que dice. Si yo voy en Totonaco, si voy de Nahua, y que venga un cabrón y que me diga, no, tú vienes pata pelada, óyeme, güey, yo sé hablar las dos idiomas, aviéntate, yo te voy a cantar bien cantado, güey. Pues por la que tienen chup, más cojo la hacha español, chumat la hacha Totonaco. Por hacer no clajatí Totonaco, como chuna que le me gasta canet. Pues la que tal y puanch, ma natola o o, ma... In Coyotla municipality, like in many other parts of Mexico, the indigenous culture is under pressure. Indian is a term of abuse, even in an area where the majority belongs to this group. Economic opportunities are few. The ticket out is a Spanish language. Puro pantalones. Entonces, chuslen que ni nunca más, no exportado puede ser. 
nakasputaw. El problema, kung kaman kan siya sila po siya ito ulipo ito ng tatano. Por eso, este, nasput mao ma, este, dialecto tutunaco. Y yo pienso también usarlo, pero no puedo. Porque algunos se burlan. Tawan luanan, que akinin como tan tatano. Quien quien kao ni kanan, que akinin nakos. In Totonac, you use the word Luan for a Mexican of Spanish origin. When this concept is translated into Spanish, you always use Persona de razón Person who can reason and is right. The superiority of the conquerors has been instilled in the language itself. Aquí nos pagan este, cuatro pesos. Por eso vienen los coyotes aquí a comprar. Pero allá en México pagan, este, dicen que a 15, a 20, a 18. Tutto <laughs> In certain parts of Mexico, parents can opt to send their children to a bilingual school. Pero ya de ahí, con el maestro Toño, nos daba poesías con Totonaco, ya de ahí aprendí. But after the sixth grade, the children are taught only in Spanish. El problema es que entran a la secundaria y todo ese rescate de cultura que se hizo en el preescolar y en la primaria se rompe. Se rompe y el niño a partir de la secundaria es obligado a perder su identidad. Me gusta hablar los dos idiomas y... Gracias. <tose> So, 6,000 languages, and the serious situation is that roughly half of the world's languages are of disappearing within this century. It only takes a generation, or even less than a generation, for a language that is unthreatened to become threatened. So within the next 100 years, probably 3,000 of the world's languages are in danger of disappearing completely, no longer next by anybody. And that means, in 100 years, there's one language dying out in the world, somewhere or other, every two weeks. If we do nothing, then after 100 years, half of the world's heritage will be gone. And the question arises immediately, when does a language die? Well, a language dies when the last person who speaks it dies. Or some people say, you know, a language dies when the second last person who speaks it dies, because then the last person has nobody to talk to.
Van ste aj še komavo le poiske, se je minisa lekcija mera, on setko lešte veis. Nem vana, a bo mi se zrkand. A moita to mi tek. Kolka, Latvia, Balticum. During the Soviet era, the Livonians were forced away from the coast, and all economic and cultural life in the area died out. The language was no longer passed on to the next generation. Every year, people with Livonian roots meet in the town of Mezirbe. Question is, for how long? Libiešu pēcteči, kas ir jau integrējies latviešos. Viņi grib saglabāt to, ka viņi nāk no Libiešiem. Un tad viņi lūk piedalās pasākumos, mācās dziesmas un grib parādīt, ka viņi bija kādreiz Libieši. Lūk, šādā veidā manu bērnu paudzē varētu tā dzīvot, bet tālāk jau arī nē. Es nepiekrītu, ka lieva valoda būtu izzust un pazust galīgi, jo pār, pār to platviešu valodā un katrs mēs katru dienu runājam daudz lielu vārdus. Arī šīs idejas un jēgas ir saglabātas. Mēs ģimenē vienmēr lietojam kādas frāzes un vārdus tikai vienīgi lieva valodā. Arī mans dēls tā, ka diezgan daudz lietas vienkārši tikai sauc lieva valodā. Viņam vecmāmiņi ir maķi un vecais, vecais tevs toķi. Un... Man ir līdzīga situācija kā tev arī. Mans vecais tēvs bija Lībietis un um, viņš gan nomirka, man bija septiņi gadi. Es nekad netik dzirdējis, ka viņš Lībijas runāt mājās. Man vecāmāt bija latvieti. Man nekad uh, nebija doma par to, ka es varētu, teiksim, meklēt vēl kādas vecos Lībiešu, lai iemācītos no viņiem varbūt valodu, jo um, man likās, ka tas ir, um, tas ir faktiski bezjēdzīgi, jo ko es darīšu pēc tam ar to valodu. Ai, midetīr, jo aiga pilkoši pēl. Lab is the meat. There must be about 50 or 60 languages in the world that have just got one speaker left. Once that last speaker goes, if the language has never been written down or otherwise recorded, then it is as if that culture has never been. That is the thing about a dying language. If it has never been written down, it is as if it has never been. And we will never know the vision of that culture and their take on what it meant to be human. How do we save languages? Well, we have to make sure that the human race as a whole is aware of the problem. If the language has never been written down, you've got to write it down. Spelling system has got to be worked out. So that means getting linguists in, local or brought in from elsewhere. Without the use of our language in writing, both you and I will be lost in the modern world. For more than 20 years, Professor Ritchell has been documenting the language Mabri. <laughs> Put tongue. Put tongue. Mm. 
samfundet udenfor vil have meget svært ved at forstå, at Malabri-sproget har en værdi i sig selv. Fra de lokale omgivelser side, hvor man synes, at det er et primitivt sprog. Måske endda er det et komisk sprog. Og det er meget svært at vende den stemning. Fordi det er så dybt øh, rodfæst i os alle sammen, at, at øh, sprog, som tales på et øh, skal vi sige, enklere kulturtrin, de må være primitive. Så det er det ene far, at de måske opgiver deres sprog, fordi de har en fornemmelse af, at det er underlødet i andres øjne, ikke i deres egne øjne. Malabri is spoken by only 300 people. For centuries, they've lived in the jungles between Laos and Thailand. But within the last generation, they've had to settle near Hmong villages, where they can get work as day laborers for a meager wage. Now each of them faces the enormous challenge it is to be integrated into modern Thai society. There will be fair, fair domains uh, where det stadig har en funktion at tale malabri i det øjeblik, de går i skole på Thai. De skal måske endda kunne gå ned i byerne og søge arbejde ned i byerne, hvor de kun kan tale Thai. Og der må man sige, at det er meget, meget væsentligt, om der på et tidspunkt bliver skabt et skriftsprog. Og det er, det er der allerede bestræbt sig i gang på. Og det er ikke spor svært at skabe et skriftsprog. Så jeg tror, at skriftligheden i vores moderne verden, som de ikke kan undgå at være en del af, der er skriftligheden meget væsentligt til. Godt balak. Godt balak. Jeg <tryk> 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 <
man gør i vores samfund, og som man gør i det moderne tegnsamfund. De skal også lære at have den samme utilfredshed med deres egen situation. De skal lære at ville stræbe efter noget andet. The most important members of a community as far as an endangered language is concerned is the teenagers. The teenagers are crucial because they are the parents of the next generation of children. Ulan Bata, Mongolia. In ten years' time, they will be mothers and fathers. And unless they have been persuaded that their language is crucial to their identity, they will not bother teaching the language to their children in ten years' time. <laughs> She speaks Mongolian. I'm going to speak to her always Russian. No. Yes. No. Because you don't speak Russian, we are good. No? <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of mistakes actually in Mongolian and in Russian, in both, you know, in English. Because uh, it's mixed. It's very bad for baby. No, it's good. Then she has ability to learn more. She's going to learn more cool words. <laughs> We are in Kibera at a place called Soweto, Nairobi, Kenya, East Africa. Plus the language, yeah. Tell them about the language, Sheng. Oh, oh. Sheng is like a mixture of all languages, from English to the ethnic languages to also it has Swahili in it. Most uh, the big the bigger part of it is Swahili. They like cut the two words like oh, English, Swahili, yes. cut the three the three first letters. E N G, then Swahili, you cut the S and the H. So put them together, you get Sheng. Yeah. <laughs> You can get like five young guys talking and their dad is like, what are these kids saying, man? Get out of my house. <laughs> this is precisely what the old generation is like anywhere in the world. They often think that the young people corrupt the language. Now, you can't stop that. You can't say to a teenager, you must not be interested in the world around. I mean, that the teenager will just look at you and say, go away, and we'll just carry on. That's what teenagers do. They're very good at that sort of thing. All living languages change. Plus, uh, the vocabulary. Every day, it's like, it gets big every day. So you find, like, different parts of Nairobi have different, uh, different like Sheng, yeah. uh, you can go to like a different part of Nairobi, they're talking, the Sheng, they talk. Somebody like me who's in, staying the same Nairobi, I can't understand like half of it. Eh? But that's the beauty of the Sheng. Uh, <laughs> street language. Street language for the youth, man. Oh. Yeah. Akuna routine matrikali kafai baby. Tattoo means three. I hear like back in the days when they started building my father's tie. Uh, to get into them, you need the three shillings. Uh, 
So that's where the name came from, Matatu. All you needed was three shillings to get into them. So, but now, Shen put the name Matri, just to make it simpler. Matatu, Matri, yeah. Then, what are they called? Also? They're also called Mats. <laughs> no, Mats. Matatu, Mats. Oh. And they just make it short. Yeah. Lakini bado ukiona mahali kama kina university ama mashuri au machuo kwanza machuo chuo sana kuna machenge hivi hivi mpoa yani ama inaweza kuwa yani za shangaza sana ifika kitu kama miaka miwili hivi yani shengile iko na pakizi tunaanza kushinda na watu wanapunga hapo inaweza inaweza kuwa ni si ajabu si ajabu bora beba bora beba all languages change that's the nature of language all over the world whether i speak it or you speak it but our language will change. Yes, of course it will change. That is to the bad. Is it to the bad? Is language change for the bad? Now, a thousand years ago, English was totally unlike the English of today. Over the last thousand years, English has been influenced by French in particular, by classical languages. Indeed, 350 languages have made English change. English now has words from all these other languages of the world. Has this been a bad thing? Is English a failed language now because it has changed? On the contrary, English is now the most successful language on earth. As I understand it, we have a choice. We could have a choice not to, to take English, but indeed we don't have. Because the people who decide, the people who set the trend, the people who put the new, I don't know, directions in all fields, that's what they use. So we as followers, which means other people who don't have the power to decide, we need to have that tool to be able to be uh, alongside these people. I just encourage my colleagues to write things in English. Let's just make their, their work more recognizable. I will go back to China and uh, tell the people who is younger than me that do learn good English is very important for your life. I think maybe one day the Chinese will just start comp competing with English to be who is going to dominate in the world. Day in and day out, I speak in terms of quantity more English than any other thing, even though I've never learned it at school at all. But it has been defining for me as far as my life is concerned, because the person that brings me over here, I met her in Paris, and if I did not speak English at that time, I would never be able to carry out a communication with her. <laughs> My mom keep quiet for two weeks, not talk to me anymore. <laughs> My father is uh, get a little bit confused, but after two weeks, uh, they just uh, say that congratulations and uh... mm, surprised. No, of course a little bit concerned about this big culture difference. But I think that after a short while, they accepted it actually very fast, and they think it was fun. <laughs> More and more Danish words and more and more Chinese words are actually also getting into to our discussions. You can see through the language, the simple language, and go to the deeper meaning. The most frustrating is actually when you get into a fight. <laughs> because I think it's a, in a fight you really need to... Then you uh, just use your body language to slam the door. <laughs> <laughs> the English language is a focal point, whether we like it or not. It is a focal point that attracts young people all over the world, for better or worse. So that's why it is important to know that history stops being local. I think that's where the challenge lies, but otherwise you have the world everywhere. But if it turns out being a problem for you, so you're going to lose your identity along the way, as I might be uh, exposed to, so that is just where my worries start, you know, uh, coming up. I don't know how I'm going to make sure that uh, what was my identity when I was born is still going to be the case in the times ahead if I keep on using English the way I do. In this English-speaking international universe, young people juggle a wealth of identities and cultures. Out of these fragments, inevitably, a new consciousness will be born. What I know is I'm more and more the, the paramount of the modern person, somebody who's, you know, picking up from every place, from every way, and just try to be 
in terms with this new period where you cannot have a limited cultural pattern. It is impossible and it's all summarized and put into a frame that I can express by the help of English. That's only English can help me doing so. But we can only be in one place at once at the same time. But come on, when the world comes to you, regardless where you are. A language acts in a sense as a straitjacket allowing you to think in one way only. Then unless you have exposure to other languages and therefore other experiences and other visions, that is not a very healthy situation. <laughs> What I was interested in in Hamlet was the way in which Shakespeare makes a portrait of the dying days of an empire. Well, I can lay the basis, but the basis in the story of Hamlet. Shakespeare يرسم لنا لحظة في التاريخ ولحظة تحول and that I think was the main key to being able to start thinking about adapting Hamlet for today's Arab world كما أنتم يولى عليكم الشعب بحاجة إلى إله إنه قاتل كذلك جميع القادة قتل أبي Shakespeare ونصوصه تعطي ل ل ل للمفكر المسرحي أو لل لل الكاتب المسرحي قناع تحميه من نظرات الرقابة. And censorship is 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 a factor that has to be considered when you're making theatre in the Arab world. I'm lucky I'm from Kuwait where there is a a, a fair amount of free speech. ولكن مع ذلك في العالم العربي بشكل عام هناك رقابة. Religion, politics and sex are the things that you don't talk about in theatre. <laughs> قرأ الجمهور العربي دلائل سياسية كبيرة وإسقاطات سياسية تهمه بشكل مباشر كجمهور عربي. When that same piece in the English language was performed to English audiences, they saw in it a clever adaptation of Hamlet. They did not see any significance for the Arab world, and that was what led me to to, to write my meanings explicitly. أنا واضح وشفاف شفاف وصاف كجدول رقرا. العمل لما يتقدم في الغرب أو في اليابان أو في دول غير عربية تعرض الجمهور أولا إلى لغة غريبة جدا. You know you don't you don't often get exposed to let's say the Arabic language for 90 minutes. And you're also following a story that's sort of familiar but and yet very different. Then you begin to feel emotions in that other language and you begin to recognize emotions in that other language. This show asks the question, who is I and who is the other? وَمَنْ هُوَ الْآخَرِ وَمَنْ نَحْنُ فِي عِيُونَ الْآخَرِ The other through my eyes and who is, who am I through the eyes of the other? وَهَذَا حِوَارِ 
ثقافي بين الثقافات مهم جدا خاصة في هذه اللحظة من تاريخنا العالم أستاذ كيف funny this actually it's quite funny doing this um okay because you have a completely different way of speaking in arabic i mean you don't say the same the, uh, this, is, anyway this is what the film's about isn't it <laughs> the more languages you learn the more languages you experience the more your brain is kept being stimulated by saying well you think this way what about that way um, you have this view what about that view Te voy mal. No le I love you. No la if the Matri people were to disappear today, uh, whether it was their language that disappeared or actually the people themselves that, that disappeared today. Unfortunately, I don't know how much the world would miss them, but that's only because the world doesn't know what they're missing. Uh, if the mob breed people disappeared, I would want to disappear with them because I, I do know uh, what, what I'm missing. Because I, I really do feel like I am a, I am a mob breed person. I, I am that... <laughs> we live in this big empty space on this frail little planet and when the astronauts were returning from the moon they said we are coming home from this home of ours we send small space probes off into the universe with messages in several languages saying we are right here if they are ever received, we have no way of knowing. The languages of the messages may not exist anymore when or if our attempts of communications are intercepted. And if they are, will we be understood? So for the time being, we are alone. I always think a way of, of understanding what happens when a language is lost is to say to somebody, what would the world have lost if your language had never been? Big, 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 big